In today's video, we're gonna be repairing the infamous AC failure on this Dodge Viper, so let's get into it. Okay guys, and welcome back to the channel. So these Dodge Vipers, these Gen 2 specifically, are known to kind of lose their AC, and it is a pretty common problem. So it's well documented on the internet, but I figured I'd make a quick video on it since I was gonna fix it on my own. A lot of guys are having issues where they'll charge up their AC, it might last a week, two weeks, maybe one season or a year, whatever, and then it's back to not working or not functioning air conditioning again on uh, these cars. So I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna change. It should be fairly simple. And there is on top, right here where our AC compressor is, there's two hoses that come off there and the O-rings go bad. So we're gonna be replacing those from the top so that you guys could do it the same way I'm doing it without having to jack or lift anything up. The other thing I'm also gonna be replacing just for safe measure is the valve cores. I kind of saw last time um, that it was kind of uh, fizzing up out of the valve core, so I'm just gonna replace them since we're gonna have them, uh, you know, the system's gonna be depleted anyways, and it already is. So right now the AC isn't working again. So I wanna fix it once and for all. So let me show you guys exactly what we're getting to. All right, so if you look right down here and you can have a visual on it from here, you'll see a 10 mil right there and one next to it. Those are the two lines that go into the AC compressor. So we have to take those two 10 mils off, pop those guys off. There's gonna be two O-rings, one on each uh, line. We'll replace the O-ring and then we'll throw those back on. So there is enough room to get your hand in here. I mean, it's not the most room. Maybe if you have aftermarket headers or something, it might be a little more difficult, but nonetheless, we'll get our hands in there. I am gonna spray some brake clean on that. You can kind of see, I'm pretty sure this is a problem because I can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but there is a little bit of green around there. So it does look like that is my issue as well. And that's what everybody reported as well on some of the forums. So let me go ahead, crack those two 10 mils loose. Like I said, I'm just gonna spray that area off with brake clean, do uh, uh, try my best to wipe that area off as well so we don't introduce any dirt into our air conditioning system and uh, we'll remove those. All right, so there we go. We've got a 10 mil mini ratchet, quarter inch on here. And I just cracked it loose and then I'm gonna try to get my electric in there see how I do so you can actually get a little electric ratchet in there which I did so we can go ahead and zip that off all right well hopefully you guys can see this look off this line right here I'll move my hand out of the way in just a second I'll pull the line up and I'll show you guys the o-ring if I can get my hand in here so this o-ring right there that you can see the black one that is the o-ring we're going to be replacing right there on that so before we replace this and reinstall it i'm going to get the lower one out since it gives us more room leaving the top one up and out of our way we can push this out of our way for now and then we'll get that other 10 mil bolt out of there and we'll do the bottom one first so hopefully you guys can see we're going to take that 10 mil bolt out right there take this bottom one out change that o-ring okay so there we are you guys Let's see if i can Remove this while showing you guys on the camera. So I'm just gonna pop out this lower hose. Just easily pops out like that. And there we have it. So you can actually see, it looks like maybe somebody replaced one of them on my vehicle. You can see one of them is green and one of them was black. So maybe they only changed the one of them. Um, but anyways, we're gonna replace both of them. So I'll pop those off and I'll show you guys the new O-rings. So a little pick tool like this will make your lives easier to get those o-rings off so i'm just gonna pull them off with this so here's the lower one so one off and let me get the other one off so the top line you can at least seems like you can pull it up quite a ways up to here to be able to pick off your o-ring yeah if i had to guess i think this is probably the one on mine that was leaking this one's not quite as flexible as that green one that looks like somebody put on there yeah this is the original one you guys this one's all square and hard looking compared to the other one. So this is definitely the culprit on mine. Looks like somebody changed the lower one already. So here we go guys, as far as cost of repair, um, I'll get into that in just a second, but we got our two O-rings. Then you get these variety packs. You can get them from AutoZone for a few bucks or online, I'll link them. So we're just gonna take these out. I'm gonna match them up with what we've got. So that. Definitely looks like the good one for there. 
This one might be that one. Let me see if I can find a little bit better one. There's just all kinds in here. So we'll match it up. I'll show you guys which one I got. All right, so there we go. We've got our two new O-rings. These are the two old ones. We got our R134A. So a few bucks on the O-rings. These are $5.99 a can here, uh, plus deposit, but I mean, it ends up working out to be $5.99 a can. And then we've got these also. So I'm gonna put in the two new valves, like I mentioned, with the two new caps to make sure everything's sealed up. So let's throw it back together. So we got one O-ring on, let's throw the other one on there. Okay, so we got both O-rings on there. You can see the two green on there. And I will tell you that putting them on is a lot easier than taking them off. And I kind of wanted to be careful taking them off so I didn't lose them. And so I had something to reference, but putting them on once you figure out which ones you need, uh, pretty simple. So, so you guys already know what the next step is. We're gonna put in our lower hose with the 10 mil bolts and we'll put in our upper hose. All right, so I just put in the lower hose and I apologize, you guys can pretty much see that can't get the camera in there at the same time my hand's in there, but um, it's a lot more snug. Like they kind of just popped right out, but putting them in, you can tell the new O-rings are a lot more tighter fit, which is obviously a good thing. So I'm gonna put that one in. Um, so the bottom one is in. Now I'm gonna put the top hose on. And we'll go ahead and throw on our two bolts. All right guys, so both 10 mil bolts are tight. You can see them both there. Everything's good. So let's move on to the other side. So I'll link these as well for you guys, but they were only like two, three bucks. I think it's just good practice to change them. Cause like I said, even uh, all I did was remove this cap. I didn't even, um, I didn't even do anything or as far as you know relieving the pressure and it was already kind of had some fluid in there and I heard a little bit of a hiss underneath the cap just when I removed it here um, so I would just replace them anyways it comes with the tool and everything so I'm just gonna swap out these valve cores on both so we're just gonna use the little provided tool they might be in here a little bit tight but I'm just gonna unscrew them and Use whatever you want to pick it out because it's going to be kind of stuck in there. There you go. So there's the original valve core of however many years old your car is. And then we'll just insert the new one and screw it down and tighten it. So it's nice and snug. And double check everything. Double check all your work. Make sure everything's tight. And we're ready to pull a vacuum. Also, it does come with brand new caps. I would just replace them, you guys. Double check that they fit. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't, but it's nice because they do have a seal in there just in case your valve core leaks so that it'll hold a seal. So I would just go ahead and replace them with the new ones too. All right, guys, so we're using the vacuum pump. We're pulling a vacuum on this. I have another separate video completely on this. So I will link it above here and you'll also see it in the description below and where you can find all this stuff, pick it up for cheap and do all the stuff yourself. So we've been pulling a vacuum for about an hour. So we're gonna go ahead and close these two valves. So make sure those are both closed. And we're gonna shut off our pump disconnect this line and this is where we can hook up our R134A. So um, I did have to go get another can. Um, I wasn't, I didn't really realize that it took this much. So for some reason I thought we only need two, but you will need three cans. It's 1.81 pounds, which works out to be 821 grams. And each can is only 340 grams. So we're gonna have to put two full cans and then some of this, and we'll use the pressure charts um, to calculate the last bit. We can also weigh it. There's kind of two ways you can do it. So let's go ahead let's get the first can in there. So everything's set up. We'll go ahead and start the vehicle, turn everything to max AC, and we'll start getting those three cans in there. Still good. 
Uh, we got cold air inside the car. Let's add more of this can. Okay. There you go. You can go ahead and check your AC. It is ice cold in here, you guys. So we're all set. We can shut this thing down. Okay, so we got everything capped off. Make sure it's all tight and we're done. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Just quick side note, make sure you wear some gloves and some safety glasses. I know sometimes it seems a little bit corny to wear that, but the last stuff you want blasting off in your face is that stuff. So you don't wanna be getting you know, a face full of that stuff, especially your eyes. So definitely make sure you wear some safety stuff. Um, Everything will be linked in the description below. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff that I use, I'll link that down in the description below where you guys can find all that stuff. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check out the other videos on the channel. We show everything, supercharging this thing and doing every single bolt on that we've ever done to this car. As well as other things, SRT 10 Ram. Uh, we also have the Hellcat swapped Dodge Dakota. So lots of stuff on this channel, you guys. Thanks for your support and we'll see you guys on the next video.